in this video I will explain the derivation of uh, the Marshall and demand function in case of Cobb Douglas type of utility loop function and Yen commodities uh, let us express the utility function as ux uh, which is uh, x is the vector of n commodities in this case and this utility function can be expressed as uh, x1 to the power alpha 1 x2 to the power alpha 2 x3 to the power alpha 3 times dot 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 xn to the power alpha n where all the alphas are positive and sometimes this expression can be abbreviated as uh, pi i runs from 1 to n xi to the power alpha i where pi is the multiplicative operator now the consumer's utility maximization program UMP is uh, maximize utility by choosing the uh, vector of commodities x uh, equals pi i runs from 1 to n x i to the power alpha i subject to the budget constraint. So in this case, the budget constraint can be expressed as pi xi equals total wealth, where pi xi shows the total expenditure and can be expressed and simple expressed in simpler form as p1 x1 plus p2 x2 plus p3 x3 plus dot dot plus p n x n equals total wealth, or this can be expressed in even shorter form as Px is W where P is the vector of prices and X is the vector of commodities and W is wealth. So, so we, we uh, derive the demand function by using the Lagrangian multiplier principle. Uh, the Lagrangian the Lagrangian function can be expressed as uh, L and it will depend on the quantity of commodities X and Lagrangian multiplier lambda. So this is pi i runs from 1 to n xi to the power alpha i minus lambda times summation pi xi minus w so now we take the derivative of this lagrangian the partial derivative of this lagrangian with the choice variable del l let us first take derivative with respect to x1 so while taking while differentiating this function with respect to x1 we we expand this term and this term is x1 to the power alpha 1 x2 to the power alpha 2 x3 to the power alpha 3 times xn to the power alpha n so while differentiating this term with respect to x1 all the terms after x2 to the power alpha 2 will be constant so we take this before so this is i runs from 2 to n xi power alpha i and we we differentiate this term only so which is alpha 1 x1 to the power alpha 1 minus 1 lambda is a constraint for now and this 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 term is simply x1 p2 x2 plus p3 x3 plus p n x n so all the term after this is a constraint and its derivative will be zero and the only thing that remains while we differentiate this with respect to x1 is p1 so we said this equal to zero so 
uh, now we can differentiate with respect to x2 with respect to x3 and in general with respect to xi so before before differentiating with respect to xi let us let us simplify this uh, to a simpler form so that a pattern develops so this this can be expressed as pi i runs from 2 to n xi to the power alpha i so we we take this alpha 1 before this multiplicative operator and we simplify this as x1 to the power alpha 1 upon x1 minus lambda p1 is 0 so this becomes alpha 1 pi i runs from 1 to n so we we club this expression with this earlier uh, i i was from 2 to n and we add the term with x1 now the i goes from 1 to n so this is xi alpha y and the term remaining is x1 minus lambda p1 is 0 so now we can see a pattern uh, while while difference while differentiating with any xi this term will be same in all cases so now <coughs> we can write the partial derivative with respect to x2 adds del l over del x2 is simply alpha 2 times this term will be same i runs from 1 to n xi to the power alpha i so divided by x2 minus lambda p2 0 so now if we differentiate with xi the term will be del l over del xi is alpha i phi i runs from 1 to n xi to the power alpha i so remember that this 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 same in all cases difference is uh, 1 over xi here I is zero. We can differentiate with respect to x. It becomes alpha pi i run x i. Again, this expression will be same. The only new x j will appear here minus zero. Now divide this expression by this expression and simplify. So this is so while we divide this by this the this term will cancel this term and the only thing remaining is alpha i divided by x i over alpha j divided by x j lambda p i over lambda p j so lambda cancels this becomes pi over pj so we can simplify this further and express the value of xj so simplifying this will be alpha i xj over alpha j x i equals p i over p j so this gives our x j equals p i over p j times uh, this goes here this is alpha j over alpha i alpha j over alpha i times x i so we use this relationship 
to derive the demand function now. So now what we do is we we substitute this value in the budget constraint so our budget constraint in this case is summation pi xi equals total wealth so this is summation p summation pi uh, so sorry we we can we can calculate or we can derive the value of xi from here too the value of xi xi will be xi will be alpha i over alpha j so the the value of xi will be alpha i over alpha j pj pj over pi times x x j so the value of xi will be symmetric uh, i in place of j so j in place of i i in place of j and a j in place of i so i simply derived xi in order to uh, remove the confusion uh, to substitute while substituting the value of xi here so by substituting the value of xi uh, this this becomes alpha i pj over alpha j pi times xj so now we de oh, demand function uh, the value of j let us fix j is and we get the demand of the first commodity if we fix j one this becomes summation so this this pi and pi cancelled so this becomes a summation alpha summation alpha p j to be 1 alpha i p1 divided by alpha 1 so we, we we fixed j to be 1 and then x1 equals w so now this this can be expressed as so now so now this alpha one is constant number which can be taken outside the operator sign and uh, even phi one x one are also constant so this is p1 sorry p1 So P1, P1 X1 over alpha 1 summation alpha i equals W. So now the the value of x1 can be expressed as x1 equals 
uh, this is alpha 1 over summation alpha i times w over p1 so this is the Marshallian demand for the first commodity so now if we, if, we, if we further fix j to 2 we can derive the demand function for the second commodity which will look like which will look like x2 is alpha 2 over summation alpha i times w over p2 and we can derive the function demand function for the nth commodity as alpha n over summation alpha i times w over pn so thank you for watching this video and in in the next video i will explain the derivation of demand curve in case of the linear utility function